My name is Rhapsody and welcome to Astraea Six-Sided Oracles. If the name didn't just give it away, Six-Sided Oracles, not Astraea, this is a dice builder. It's from Little Leo Games, it's published by Akupra Games, and it is available on Steam as of one day after the release of this, that being September the 21st, 2023. Some of you might find this screen and the name of this game a little bit familiar, and that's because Teak and I, well, it's possibly because, I'm not gonna be so presumptuous as to say there is no other way you could know about it, but a vector by which you might have known that is that Teak and I did a uh, take a peek on this game quite a while ago and were deeply impressed with it at the time. Knowing that the game is now coming out in its 1.0.0 state, it's about time for me to dive in. Mooney, the Astral Disciple. So this is the default unlocked character. This is also a completely blank save file, uh, meaning our first run is going to be primarily, uh, well, not primarily. Our first couple of rooms at the absolute least would be primarily tutorialization, getting familiar with the systems of the game because it has quite different systems, although in some ways also quite similar systems to a lot of other games that we've seen on the channel before. Mooney is character complexity, one star out of six. I can only imagine there's going to be one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. That's just my quick guess. Uh, level and lore, their profession is an academic. Their astrarium is the Noctuan Grimoire. They come from the planet of Noctua. Coming from a lineage of scholars, Mooney has always searched for lost knowledge of the star system. Her astrarium, astrarium? Astrarium. Astrarium has been passed down through generations as her family relic. With her wisdom, she is capable of improving dice and turning adversity into an advantage. Let's play with Mooney. Oh my, Astraea, what am I supposed to do? What's happening? My dear friend got corrupted. There is nothing I can do. I can't save her. Wait! Who are you? What are you doing here? No one comes to this doomed planet. I'm Mooney. I was called to Aquarius by this grimoire. Grimoire? Wait, is that one of the six-sided oracle astrariums? If you have this grimoire, it means you must be one of the new oracles. And you can save her. Oh, here she comes. What? Oracle? Oh, my dear friend, how could I let this happen to you? We've got to purify her fast before she gets stronger. You will need to learn a few things to purify her. Here comes the tutorial. But first, let's draw dice. We've hit our draw phase. One of the systems that's immediately going to be familiar. Oh, the, 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 the game is going to describe it. I'm not allowed to describe it. What? It's actually probably easier to let the game describe it rather than me just start trying to piecemeal explain everything on the screen. This is your dice hand. You need to use those dice to purify your enemies back to normal. Enemies also roll dice, but they roll the same dice each turn. Uh, this is one of the systems that I had hinted to towards earlier, saying... Uh, Something that we've seen in other games. This is the intent system. Aha. Uh -huh. After you play all your actions, enemies will activate the action that they've rolled. So we have our own turn, and then at the start of the enemy's turn, they're going to be committing the action above their head. These are the main actions of our world. Purify and corrupt. Purify decreases corruption. That means it'll damage enemies and heal you. Corrupt is the opposite. It increases corruption, meaning that it heals enemies and damages you. Note that corrupt actions have a red outline. Actions with a red outline are considered mandatory actions and need to be used before you end your turn. Therefore, you must use all the corrupt actions before you end your turn. This is the enemy's corruption meter. It starts fully filled with corruption and you need to purify it to win the battle. You also have a corruption meter. It starts fully filled with purification. 
But if your corruption meter gets fully filled with corruption, you'll lose a heart. If you lose all of your hearts, you'll be corrupted and lose the game. Let's try to purify her. So we can see these are our starter dice. Right clicking on them will show me all of the other dice sides they could have rolled. This is half threes, half twos. Over here on the corrupt tutorial, two threes, the rest twos. Not super relevant in particular, but I will note that these symbols are going to be relevant. This symbol is the deal corruption to any target. Going to be kind of familiar for a period of time, but eventually we will see other ones like deal corruption and purify to all targets or to yourself or to only enemies and things like that. So the sigil here is not just giving us the information of what this accomplishes, but also the targeting it is capable to accomplish that in. Uh, I'm going to throw those and overheal the enemy, knowing that it's not going to help them a lick. And then purify you for five, getting you all the way back down to two HP. Well, two corruption, let's say. At the end of the turn, we dealt, dealt the one corruption the enemy had rolled. Right click on this die to view all of its faces. There we go. All of the faces on this die are the area corrupt single. So this is going to do one corruption to all targets. Worth noting, this is not all enemies. This is all targets. This will include myself. You can right click on any die to view all of its faces. We've also got a couple others here. We've got player purification, deals two purification to ourselves. So if I have to do one corruption to all targets, including to myself, and then I'll end up with two corruption in my purification meter, I can use the purification, the player purification die here that only applies it to myself in order to heal back out of that position. Although I could do the exact same with the area purification as it turns out. Get him. Oh no! Too late. She's resisting your purification. She's getting stronger. All enemies have an over corruption meter. When they receive corruption, they get healed, but their over corruption also increases. Once an enemy's over corruption meter gets fully filled, they'll get over corrupted and activate the action next to it immediately. So this is really important because there are the mandatory corruption actions, because corruption is typically treated as default, at least in the ways that I've encountered it so far, uh, as a, a quote unquote negative, a bad, a not good, an ungood. Uh, this is the system that prevents you from trying to do what I did in the last turn and just healing the enemy with corruption at the start of the turn and then dealing your damage at the end. I think you'll need to use all of your Australian power to purify her. As one of the six-sided oracles, you have the power to use corruption in your favor. Attached to your corruption meter are actions called virtues. So we've seen that this is effectively quote unquote corruption meter. This is, it's HP, right? And as I get lower on HP, while I am dealt damage possibly by myself, but definitely by the enemy, I'll be moving down this bar. And as I move past any of these virtues, I will unlock them and get the ability to use them in combat, giving a kind of uh, rubber band effect in a little bit of a weird way where you both want to harm yourself and heal from it before the enemy harms you such that you have the ability to activate multiple times over similar virtues. I'll make that clearer in the future. It's a bit of a brain fart of a sentence, I guess. It, technically, it is correct, but it's probably not <laughs> very good for explaining anything to anyone at the moment. As your corruption increases and passes virtue, that virtue is enabled to be- Yeah, of course, that's what I just said you. When enabled, virtues can be played, just like dice. These virtues can be enabled multiple times per turn. So here's the thing I'm talking about, right? Let's, this is probably the easiest way to demonstrate it. If I have the ability to deal one damage in, one damage, one corruption in AoE, and then one purification in AoE, and then another corruption in AoE, and then another purification in AoE, there is a world in which that leaves the enemy on the exact same amount of corruption and purification as they did at the start of the turn. Alternatively, if I'm just around here for my virtues, I'll have the ability to 
activate this virtue, which is deal four damage, four purity, rather, to an enemy, and then heal myself back, and then deal one damage to everyone, getting that ability again, and then heal myself, and then go back, and then do it again. So, I guess, is it rubber banding, slingshotting? You, it's not really slingshotting. You kind of just want to... Ah, it, it's the playstyle where losing health is good, but instead of like full berserker, you want to be on minimum health at all times, you just want to fluctuate your health consistently. Now, please, purify my dear friend, Oracle. You're our only hope. All right, I got this. Okay, so this symbol is deal three corruption to yourself. All the rest of these, cool. So three corruption to ourselves, and we don't really have any other way to mitigate it at the moment. So if I do that, I'm going to hit this, this, and this bar from our purity meter or our corruption meter. Um, I, I am going to find myself in that position consistently where I interchange the term purity and corruption in order to refer to effectively damage or healing. But the thing is, it's damage or healing depending on the target, whether the target is initially corrupted or purified. So I'm, I'm going to have to make my way through that terminology and settle it down quite quickly. I apologize if I'm a little inconsistent to start out with. So if I take three damage here, or corruption, I have the ability to unlock two virtues, the virtue of rolling, uh, re-rolling up to two dice from any target, as well as the deal four purification to an enemy. So let's do that first, and then hit the enemy for four purification. And now I don't want to corrupt the enemy so much, but if I deal two corruption to myself, I'll unlock my final virtue, which is draw a die. Start a die. Deal three purification to yourself. Sounds grand. So I already have the best result on all of these die except for the purification to self. And the enemy has the worst available hit from its own die. So that's really helpful. It's also only dealing that corruption to itself, but it's getting closer to triggering its over corruption. So I'm going to reroll only the starter die. Well, they're all starter dies, rather. I'm going to re-roll only the player purification die. And then give him what for? This virtue is different. At the start of your turn, it'll be automatically enabled and can only be played once per turn. And this virtue is the one that differentiates Mooney from, assumedly, the other following classes, as Mooney has the ability to convert a die by default. Converting a die turns it from a corrupt action to a purifica uh, purification action of the exact same type. So here I could just hit the starter die to deal one corruption to all targets with the uh, convert virtue, and then that will be G healing all targets for us. That's it, I actually kind of want that to deal damage to me to unlock the next virtue. Although, if I do that, that will also corrupt the enemy by one, which will then trigger their overcorruption and deal an additional three damage to me, which means I'll go all the way down to drawing a die. That said, they have only rolled do corruption to themselves, so they can't damage me more this turn. I'm going to do it. So here, if I took one more damage at this point, I would then lose a heart. Let me draw a card here. A die, rather. Four damage to the enemy, classically. Uh, yep, that's one of my worst sides. That's one of my worst sides. Cool. I can use the reroll on the two that have rolled low. Hey, we high roll on each of them, baby. I get to heal myself there, as well as get the enemy down to 1 HP. I can play my convert- Sorry, this is uh, the, the non-fish character. I can play my convert action to transform a corrupt. That said, 
I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to use the virtue I have unlocked. Oh my, Estrella! I was so scared! But you did it! She's back! Oh dear. I got corrupted. Again! But I didn't need your help. I'm sure I would have been able to purify myself at any time. You were doomed! You're about to become one of those things. Forever. Uh, you're exaggerating, Safe. How many times have I got corrupted? I've lost count. But here I am. Alive and uncorrupted. Don't mind her. She's just an old grumpy. Misa, you won't believe it. She has the grimoire that belonged to the Noctuan Oracle. One of the six-sided oracles. Say again? How could that be? My brother used to be one of them. That's why I'm here. I don't know. This grimoire has been protected by my family for many generations. I feel it's calling me to Estrella's heart, the source of all corruption. So you know what to do. You need to go where the Crimson Dawn happened. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Misa, the Antiquarian. And this little talking sentinel here is safe. The bell keeper. We'll help you along your journey. If you bring us star shards, we can use those to improve your resources. May Estrella bless you. Thanks, Mooney. Good luck on the journey. Woohoo! I recognize the screen like this. And it scrolls from the top down to the bottom. Woohoo! Let's get into our first fight. I think um, pretty much all of the tutorial is done now as well. I think we just get to go into our first run. Okay, so anything that is a symbol that I've never seen before, I'm going to be hovering over and trying to explain. Just as default for the early couple of episodes here, until we're all on the same level. So this enemy has Shadow Mantle on player. So it will apply three Shadow Mantle to you, which is us. Uh, Shadow Mantle blocks X Purification until the end of your next turn. Okay, so that will prevent me from being able to heal myself, primarily, is the, the threat that poses. I've got a starter die that re-rolls up to two die from any target, which means I can re-roll enemy die. And may want to do so, because at least half of the die is worse than the Crystallized Swirl has currently rolled. I know the same for the Sluggish as well. Well, completely different, but kind of the same in that there are worse results there. Uh, okay. In my own hand, I have Light Shield. Apply one Light Shield to any target, which... It's the opposite of the Shadow Mantle. Uh, blocks X Corruption until the start of your turn. Uh, I've got Player Purify here. If you re-roll at least one die with the previous ability, deal one purification to yourself. Uh, and here, importantly, the starter die. Uh, enhance one die from any target until the end of the enemy's turn. And enhancing a die is increasing a die with any type of purification action with value 1 to the same action with value 6. This is important because one of mine that only has one at the moment is starter die. Area Purification. Deal one Purification to all targets. So here I have the ability to use my starter die to upgrade my area damage to six. And boom. Absolutely get him. So we're going to have incoming five damage this turn. Which will unlock pretty much all of the, uh, the virtues for us. Frankly, I do want to take 5 damage. It'll unlock all of the virtues for us. So I don't really want this starter die to reroll anything. Okay, I'm going to block... No, I don't want to block incoming corruption on myself. Uh... Okay, fine, I'll hit the enemy with that. Give him a light shield. And then I can play this, but it... Reroll up to two die from any target. I don't think I can play this unless I reroll, but also it wouldn't have an effect unless I reroll because I have to reroll at least one die for it to deal any purification. So I'm gonna end my turn early. Oh, 
Let's draw first. Ooh, that's great. A very convertible action right there. Now does three damage. And we can use that immediately on one of our enemies and then follow up with a couple more simple purifications to finish off the other. There's no persistent... Well, I mean, the persistent health in this game is the amount of hearts that you have. Otherwise, as you saw just at the end there, we refill our uh, corruption meter entirely with purification. Corruption purified. Star shards, we gain 50 of them, and we'll get up to two die from the chest. These being new cards for us. So there's an offering here of a safe neutral die, a balanced neutral die, or a risky neutral die. And... I don't need to tell you that this one's safe because it can't roll any corruption. This one's balanced because it's got some corruptions, and this one has giant purifications. But many more corruptions on it. I'm going to be taking the risky one because we do have, as one of our very easiest abilities to access, uh, a reroll as this character. Next up, convert. Uh, okay. So the safe convert die here just gives us convert actions. So convert an action in your hand until the enemies uh, end of the enemy's next turn. Sure. There's also Twilight Sigil. Apply three Twilight Sigil to a target, which says creatures with Twilight Sigil take X purification whenever a die is converted. So I could give three Twilight Sigil to an enemy target and then use my once per turn action to convert any negatives that I roll. And when I convert those, I'll just immediately deal three damage to the target. I like the idea of that. And then finally we have Manipulate over here. And Manipulate says convert up to two dice from, and this is important, any target until the end of the enemy's next turn. So our own conversions can only target die from our hand. However, Manipulate can convert die in enemy's hands. So if the enemy was intending to deal damage to you, you can make them heal you instead. I really quite like the idea of going with Manipulate, but I feel like at the moment, I need a little bit more damage to start with. So I'm gonna get the Twilight Sigil in order to give me the ability to kind of like build up momentum against enemies. We head to the next area and gain 50 Star Shards before a normal battle calls our name. This normal battle is against the Lost Sentinel, and that Lost Sentinel has an ability, Agony. Uh, at the end of its turn, apply one Doom to this creature. And Doom increases dice corruption value by X. So, for a couple of episodes at the absolute least, I will invoke direct comparisons to other systems you might be familiar with. For instance, this is gain one strength per turn. Kinda. Basically ish. It's, it's plus one to the value of the default actions that you are doing for damage's sake. Plus one power, plus one strength, etc. Or plus one doom, as the case may be. All right. So we've got one purification to an enemy, one purification to any target, and... You're doing two purification to us. I mean, I do need to make sure that I go relatively quickly through this fight. I do have the ability to enhance one of these die. Boom. Give me the old six damage. And then I will just convert and go straight for the enemy. I don't think anything tricky about trying to unlock the ability to reroll and then trying to reroll my die there uh, would have been significantly uh, more impactful than just going straight to the enemy. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we've got kind of crummy rolls. I'm going to... I mean, the enemy also got a pretty crummy roll for us. They do have one, two threes and fours, and they've rolled a three, so it's the upper half of their die. 
That said, I can fully withstand three damage at this point, so I'm not really threatened. I'm going to use my reroll to try and get this risky die to roll one of the big purification sides, and then to reroll this to try and get something higher than one. Oh, you were so close! Shucks. Heck. Dang. Gosh. Well, guess I'm going to do it again. Oh, I got him. Absolutely got him. I'll take that three damage, thank you. In doing so, we unlock our next virtue of four damage to an enemy. It also appears if I start my turn with that amount of HP lost, I re-unlock all of the virtues that are under that limit of HP. Cool. Um, yeah, this one really doesn't need to take much longer than just throwing two effects at the enemy. Get another 50 star shards and two more dice. Love it. Ooh. Scholarly charge. So we've got this scholar's symbol here, which says deal one purification to any target, deal two additional purification for each die that has been enhanced during this battle. We only have one die, I think. Yes, this one here, minor enhance. Yeah, I only have one die total that actually has the ability to enhance any other die, so... Unless I'm thinking of getting more enhancement in the future, this is not as interesting as I otherwise might want it to be. Acceptance is just corruption to all targets. So that's effectively just accepting that I'm going to be rolling corruption to all targets, but typically, one might assume, I'm going to be converting. Interesting. Shadow Mastery. Gain for Doom. So increase dice corruption value by X. Then it deals three purification to all targets for each corrupt action of any type in your hand. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so what's going on here? We gain four doom, which means that our corruption die values are higher. Oh, so this is don't make a mistake, is what this is. This says put enough things in your deck, enough risky die, enough corrupt actions in your deck, such that you often have them available for the sake of the damage from Shadow Mastery. However, never play those because you've got a giant doom value. So if you play it on the enemy, you're going to overcorrupt them and then they'll just deal damage to you. If you play it on yourself, you might just take yourself out of the game immediately. Um, There's also a skip option down here for the old plus 10. I'm leaning towards acceptance at the moment. Having some area of effect abilities certainly appears. Hmm. I could also start drafting towards... Oh, there's also a symbol here that says draw. Draw one die. Uh, it's the same as the one on our virtue. I could also put myself in a position here where I start getting ready to take more... Enhancements in the future? I guess, to my mind, I have one free action of converting a die every turn. How often am I actually utilizing it? Relatively minimally. I don't think I can take Shadow Mastery. I don't think I can take... Scholar Charge. I am just going to take Acceptance. Let's go. Oh! No, oh, that's not draw. Timeless. Choose up to three dice with a non-mandatory action from your hand to not be discarded at the end of your turn. And then if you do, deal three purification to yourself. Okay. Cool. I like keeping things. It's also New Moon Ray. Deal two purification to an enemy for each safe dice you have in your dice pool. Have I taken any safe dice yet? 
Stada, 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 stada. Risky and balanced. And balanced. Okay, so no, I haven't is the answer to that. New Moon Ray. One purification. Plus. I mean, for each di safe die you have in your dice ball. So it's going to have to count itself. It's also Light Shield over here, applying Light Shield to any target. I'm leaning towards New Moon Ray, because it makes it a lot easier in the future to select safe options, and safe options have a lot of things that do uh, build into enhancement builds. Unknown, a random event or ambush, or a chest for drawing two die. Let's go to the event. You spot an abandoned Sentinel workshop. You can use the available resources to do some useful things. Turn on a Sentinel, I improve a Sentinel, I don't have one yet. Or loot Sentinel scraps, I'm definitely turning one on. Ancient Effigy, knows Owl about Enhance. Adapted Courier has expressed delivery and Armillary Sphere says everyone deserves a second chance. We can also see the die. So for what it's worth, I will very quickly explain this, although I think it'll probably do it at the start of the next battle. Uh, Sentinels will go on our side and they will roll their own die independently to us. We still have control over their die, so I can roll, I can re-roll rather their die if I should choose. However, the enemy would have to independently directly attack them or hit them with area of effect in order to take them out. If they die, they're lost until the end of the battle, at which point they regenerate and they're joining you in the next fight. They have relatively low health pools as well, so they do often die. This armillary sphere also has the ability auto turret. At the start of its turn, a random enemy receives two purification. Astral Rebound is this adapted Coria's ability as well. The next time you play is return to your die pool instead of being discarded. Cool. And there's also Astral Calling. Choose a die from your die pool and draw and roll. If your draw pool is empty, dice from discard are shuffled back into your draw pool. Cool. Hmm. Choose a die from your discard to draw and roll. Interesting. Adapted Coria. Maybe I want the middle. Oh, I kind of want to go with more enhance, actually. Sure. I'll take the enhancing one. One of the big reasons I want to take more enhance right now is because enhance affects purify actions with type value 1. And I have a lot of purify actions that have type value 1 at the moment. I'm just hovering over all of them here. However, I also have a lot of corrupt actions that are value one as well. So if I convert a corrupt action into a purify action and it still has value one, I then have the ability to enhance that. So I think I'm going to... It's not going to be as extremely likely at all times, at least if I have my druthers, that I don't have a good target for the enhancement. Sentinel shop. Spend Star Shards with Sentinels, acquire new Sentinels, or upgrade the ones you have. Minimum Star Shard cost. And there's a Forge Shop as well. Spend Star Shards to improve your dice pool. Here you can forge, destroy, or duplicate dice. I just got this. I've just picked up a Sentinel. Nisa, come out! How may I be of help? These are Sentinels. They're helpers which have their own dice and corruption meter. They are independent of you, and therefore their dice are not considered part of your hand. Also, effects that affect only you won't affect Sentinels. You can have up to two Sentinels. If their corruption meter is fully filled with corruption, they break and will be repaired only at the end of the battle. You can click on show dice to show their dice. Yeah, pretty much exactly what I just said, I guess. Ooh, show dice though. See a couple new ones. So we've got a charge pile on here that has the auto turret, but only one. That charge pylon has uh, reasonable hits, but it's also got the ability copycat. Copy a die from your hand. To, sorry, choose a die from your hand to copy and then roll. Interesting. There's also Protostar. What? Protostar has awful die sides, however, also has Vendetta. 
Whenever receives corruption, apply one empowered to this creature. Okay. Increases corruption received by one. The empower increases dice purification value by X. Okay, so this gets stronger if it takes damage. There's also Sentinel upgrades here. I would have the ability to just upgrade the Ancient Effigy immediately, which I feel like I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's level two. Woo. See ya. Good luck on your journey. All right, normal battle or hard battle? Let me quickly decide. It's gonna take a moment. Oh, I guess I'm already in the hard battle. Oh boy. Okay, so you've got 30 health. Your over corruption is applying a doom to yourself. So you will grow larger effectively if you manage to deal enough corruption that way. You have thick skin, which decreases purification received by one. So I ideally never want to hit you with something that just does one. Thorns, when purification is received, the purification resource also receives a corruption. Yeah, another reason for that same kind of effect. And then Grim Awakening, apply three doom to this enemy in three turns. So I, I need to, I need to get about business. Oh, that's the Minor in Hearts. I'd love to re-roll that. And the Twilight Sigil. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna hit the enemy for no damage, but it will hit me back for one, which will give me the first Virtue. Reroll up to two die from any target. I want to reroll the... Companion... The Twilight Sigil and the Minor Enhance, but I should probably just go Twilight Sigil and Minor Enhance. Oh, baby. That works out. Let's apply some Twilight Sigil to the enemy. And then I will enhance this starter die all the way up to six. Hit you once more. And this sets me up for the next corruption to unlock the uh, four purification to an enemy ability for me. There's no reason for me to try and spend that one single sentinel die in order to have no impact on the enemy. Two purification for each safe die you have in your die pool, so that's only one at the moment. Three Corruption to all targets. That'll take out my Ancient Effigy, so I'm definitely not going to be utilizing that. Mm. Okay, so the Virtues cast by us count as us being their origin. It's not just dice from my hand will trigger thorns, it's also effects from my Virtue bar. Got it. Um... I definitely want to purify a target. Man, I would have... I would have done things slightly differently. I would have slightly healed myself with the reroll and then taken damage afterwards had I thought about it. Okay, I'm going to convert the AoE and then utilize it, healing myself all the way up to the next activation of uh, Purification to the enemy. Mm -hmm. Quick re-roll. Oh my god, we got the double enhanced, baby! And we've also got two that can be double enhanced. <laughs> Sick. Okay, the play die, though. Uh, if you reroll at least one die, deal purification yourself. Oh! Sick! Okay, I'm gonna purify the enemy. Then I'm going to hit them with the six. This'll unlock the ability for me to draw another die. And then I re-roll that, because I don't want to re-roll the enemies. Yeah, they've got their worst one out available at the moment. 
I reroll that, it does a huge amount of healing to myself, and now I have a corruption die that I have to use. Oops. Oh well. I'll deal some corruption to myself, and then... Four... More to the enemy. They'll deal one more to me, giving me my draw. Gonna be playing on the edge this and Oh, I was about to say, gonna be playing on the edge this entire time, but... I've got a risky die that is going to save us now. So I'll heal myself up, just make sure that I've not made any awful mistake, and then drop a giant die on the enemy. And in response, they will die giantly. Corruption's been purified, I get 100 star shards, I get two dice, and I get a star blessing, a passive effect with lower power. All right, all right. Astral calling for choosing other things to draw. <sighs> I mean, New Moon Ray, if I want to double down on the whole safe build, this is this is what I go with. Let's do it. Oh wow, another New Moon Ray? These are getting really, really quite good, for each of them that I'm adding. Obsessed Analysis. Apply six light shield to any target, and add a wounded hex die, wound hex die rather, into your draw pool. A wound hex die is a die with only corrupt actions, and a hex die is a negative die that stays in your dice pool for the rest of the battle. So, statuses. This is status. Ish. Similar to a status build. Similar to void, junk cards, things of that ilk from many different styles of game. Uh, Dark Enlightenment has gained two doom and refresh your virtues. Enables all of your virtues. Ignoring any effects that disable your virtues until the next time you play them. Interesting. I'm gonna go for the New Moon Ray again. I mean, like... Yeah, I've got three safe die, and all of them are New Moon Ray? This seems good. Hollow Nest. Whenever you draw a Hex die, gain a Research. Research increases the effectiveness of Enhance by X. Okay, so it'll buff... If I have Research 1... Using an enhance action will take a die from 1 to 7 rather than 1 to 6. Uh, Eternal Egg Mooney for every 3 hex die you draw, gain a boost. <laughs> if only I'd known that I was going to have to get hex die. <laughs> oh no. Draw 3 additional dice next turn. Sorry, draw 1 additional die next turn for every 3. Okay, yeah, relatively small. Um, Sun Eye. Whenever you are a Sentinel, deal corruption to an enemy. That enemy receives five purification. I'm gonna take the Sun Eye. Cause that'll give me some tricky ways to still kill enemies. Got a duplicate effect here as well. Duplicate a non-epic die from your die pool. Destroy! Destroy a die from your die pool. Okay, let's let's have a quick look at this. Cause uh <laughs> There's a couple here I want to get rid of. To balance die, duplicate a non-epic die. Yeah, I'm going with destroy. Stellar Cleanse has the ability to pretty much always be enhanced, but most of my die have the ability to be enhanced. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop a Stellar Cleanse here. Misa, come out! Here's what I can make with your Star Shards. Uh, ooh. Okay, so we've got Forge actions of multiple different costs here. We've got three that cost 200. Uh, an area purification, three astral rebound, the next three die you play are returned to your draw pool instead of being discarded, wow. And insight, change one die from your hand with any type of purify action into value one, sorry, with value one, into a draw three action until the end of the end of this next turn. Cool. Also play a purify, deal three purification to yourself, and a single astral rebound. Is a duplicate? 
Every time you buy this item, it increases its cost by 50. Same with destroy. So I kind of want to modify a die and then dupe that die. So like if I put player purification three on... Well, I kind of want to dupe one of the new die. Oh, but maybe I could do it on a, a purify plus plus. I replace two corruption with three player healing, and then I duplicate that die. It seems pretty good, actually. It doesn't give me the destroy option, and that does scare me. Deals one for each safe die you have in your die pool. Deals one. How? I have three safe die. Um. Don't mean to be taking forever plus a day. So, sure. I think I will actually. Yeah, I confirm that forge action. Now I place that there on that risky die. And then I'm going to dupe it. Easy. <sighs> uh, I was almost tempted into removing things. Shrine, here you can pray for Astraea's heart. Recover one heart, sacrifice a heart for a boon, or gain star shards. I'm definitely gonna be sacrificing a heart and gaining a star blessing, of course. Oof. We look like we've unlocked the darkest dungeon right there. Uh, increases purification dealt by safe die by one, and in uh, increases purification dealt by starter die by one. Neat. Also, Karmic Brooch. Every four times you deal purification to an enemy, you receive one purification, then finally, Dice Smith's Helmet. If you have 30 dice in your dice pool, pfft, what's that? Pfft, I'm not a... It's not thin deck, it's like... Small bag, I guess, because this is the, the bag in which you hold the dice. If you have 30 dice in your dice pool, increase purification received by enemies by one, and for each five additional dice, increase purification received by enemies by one. Cool, but I'm not going to be utilizing that. Photon Glove or Karmic Brooch. Seems appropriate to us. Hmm... I'm going to go with the Photon Glove because it gives me a lot more ability to try and just lean into the safe New Moon build. Boss Battle, Sanctuary Parasite. The final challenge of the Tainted Reef yields 150 Star Shards, a Sentinel, an Epic Die, and a Black Hole Blessing. And recovers all of your hearts. Excellent. So I can sell more of them in the future. <laughs> That's all I want them for. To give them away for power. Oh, hello. Good ol' enhance there. Love to see it. Okay. The enemy has the ability Vengeful Stab. Activates this enemy die every... Sorry, activates this enemy die. This enemy die. Okay, so I can only assume that means the one above it, because this is not a die, this is an ability. The only die they have is the one they rolled this turn. Uh, which intends to deal two corruption to us and then apply a minimize, which means the next X purifications by us are going to be decreased by one. That is the minimal, tiny, minuscule effect. Well, well, well. First off, let's enhance both of these to sixes. <laughs> Get him. Oh, with a seven on each of them because they're safe and starter dies. Beautiful. Um, blocks corruption until the start of your next turn. So when the enemy overcorrupts, they'll apply doom to themselves, growing larger effectively. Got it, got it. This starter die can only really have an impact if I use it to reroll something, but it has no impact right now because it's just putting purification on myself. Um, I do want the enemy to deal some damage to me so that I unlock my virtues, so I will just strike them here. And then... Let's space... Ooh! 
I could use this to re-roll the enemy. Actually, it looks like uh, a lot of the other ones they could roll might be worse for me. Yeah, so I'll leave where we are. Seventeen damage turn one. Seems reasonable to me. Oh, I love to see enhanced actions like that. Beautiful. Save die. Hey, okay, cool. Deal one purification for uh, to an enemy for each safe die you have in your pool. Three purification now. Great. It's working. Uh, this two corruption in AOE will affect the enemy. So it'll start getting them over-corrupted. So if I use a, uh, light shield on them, I can prevent them from trying to over-corrupt themselves that way. I will. And also... Oh no, I can't use my sentinel die! Oh no, oh shucks, oh heck, oh dang! Well, I kind of also want to re -roll. Sure. I'm going to very quickly re-roll this purified die as well. And the other one, just in case. Dang! This is actually why I rolled both of them. Because if I do get a big number on my Purify Risky die, uh, I wanted this to re-roll into a 1. I was otherwise going to use my Virtue to convert the 1 Corruption into a 1 Purify and then enhance that up to 6. But obviously, 11 is significantly more than 6, right? I I'm almost certain that's the case, right? There we go. Thank you for unlocking another ability for me. That said, noting now that the enemy is going to be doing two damage to everyone, uh, I'm going to heal my friend. Don't want to lose my sentinel there. Not if I can avoid it. All right, time for a draw. Let's go with the big enemy purify there. Hmm. I wish I could convert two in my hand at the moment, because converting this risky die would give me the ability to enhance it. Converting this one gives me the ability to heal in area of effect, which I think is probably significantly more impactful right now. So let's do it. Heck, I can even just use the risky die right now to do one damage to myself in order to unlock the ability to deal another four. I'm not going to, but I could. Even though I won't. Ooh, three purity to the self. Interesting. Unfortunately, now I only have one that I can actually even enhance. I'll give you some Twilight Sigil, despite the fact that I don't really expect that I will utilize that this fight. That's a tough hand. I'm gonna re-roll these two. Hey, that'll do. That will do. Boom. Corruption purified. We get a new Sentinel, 150 Star Shards, an Epic Die, a Black Hole Blessing, which is a powerful passive with drawback. An interesting relic to get from a boss. <coughs> because it's kind of like a boss relic. Uh, and also recover all of your hearts. By the by, just to be very clear, I'm making fun of myself for referencing the other games in this instance, not the games themselves for having similarities to other games within similar genres. 
that it'd be weird if I like logged into Counter Strike Go and I was like, uh, this has a, 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 get a cross in the middle of the screen, uh, just just a, a hair off where the trigger is pointing. <coughs> like, yeah, of course, it's an FPS game. It's got crosshair. That's how that works. Dice drive. Uh, hard dice drive. It has the ability at the end of your turn, you receive one purification. Then an enemy receives one purification for each purification that exceeded your corruption meter. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Starry and then Guardian, which also has auto turret. However, got to show these dice so I know what's actually up with them. Dice drive. This has the ability to draw. Neat. Obviously, it's healing us every turn, which is also pretty neat. Purification. Reasonable. Starry just has big hits. It's got even a five it can do. And then the Guardian has light shields that it can apply, as well as light shield to all enemies. Interesting. I like the two damage per turn, confirmed. I also like the light shields and then the alternative being ones on the Purify, because those are very um, uh, convertible. Uh, sorry, convert enhanceable die. I think for that reason, I'm going to be taking the Guardian. Welcome, buddy. Good to see you. Whoa, whoa! We've got copycat plus plus plus. Choose a die from your hand to copy and roll. It's got that on all sides. Baleful Hoot. Deal three purification to any target. Gain three doom. I don't... I don't actually understand this one. Alright, I understand it now. It's, uh, it, it's because this character has the conversion ability. I think, I, like, we're just starting out with this game. I'm not gonna understand things for 500 hours. And then some! Uh, it's, it's that if I give myself Doom, that will make my corruption values higher, and then if I convert those corruption values into purification values, they're going to be high purification values. That's what I assume is uh, here in the Baleful Hoot. And then Scholar's Charge! Deals damage to any target, deal additional damage, deal five additional damage for each die enhancer in this battle. Yep. Absolutely. Choose a Black Hole Blessing. We've got the Ominous Shell. Draw an additional die per turn at the start of each battle. Apply to Hidden to all enemies. You can't see what an enemy with Hidden has rolled, but you can see their die. Rerolling the enemy's die will reveal all its dice faces. Neat. The Forbidden Atlas. Neutral. Draws one additional di die per turn. At the start of each battle, gain two Doom. So if I'm okay with what I said previously of having a... Uh, of just relying on converting individual actions, and I've got a lot of safe actions. That, that might be a really good pickup for us. That'll just make stronger uh, converted die. And then Codex of Burdens. Uh, draw two additional die per turn. You can only use one virtue per turn. Refresh ignores this condition. One virtue per turn is a not as many as I want it to be. I'm gonna take the Forbidden Atlas. I'm okay with being a wee bit doomed. Hmm. Destroy a die from your die pool. Stellar Cleanse seems an easy one to remove. I've already removed the other. Alright. Ambush! How dare you. We're ambushed here in the Astropolis Ruins by... The Wicked Librarian and the Rusty Jailer. Well, I mean, if there's no good at jailing, I'll be fine. Um...
I could just deal three corruption to myself in order to unlock all of my abilities. Uh, outbreak as well. Whenever below or equal to half of max corruption, apply two doom to this enemy. So I want to get you to uh, 16, and then I want to kill you the turn after if possible. Yes, the ambush has given the enemies hidden on their die. Got it. Uh, that light shield's probably just going to get played on me. Four damage to you, and then the reroll. I'm going to reroll one of the enemies. Because at least it'll give me an idea of what it is. This is a starter dice. So this will deal two. Courtesy of our Photon Glove. So I'm going to have to direct this elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, the enemy actually applied Doom to us. Oh wow. Yeah, that was working pretty well. Okay. I'm going to enhance my re-rolling die, and then I'm going to re-roll both of my riskies. One good result. In doing so, I applied six purification myself, giving myself full health. And then I mentioned I was going to have this enemy outbreak, and then I was going to kill them, and... When I say kill, of course, what I mean is purify, but I'm still going to do it. Um, let's re-roll the enemy and my risky die again. Alas. So the enemy now has apply one doom to a random enemy as well as their corruption action. Got it. Three to you. I'll convert this and then deal another five. And turn. Seems like a successful ambush, don't it? I guess depending on which side you're standing. Okay, let's give you some Twilight Sigil before I convert the AoE here. And I am just going to continue wailing on you. Because frankly, I don't expect you're about to deal eight, da eight, seven damage to me in a single attack. I don't, I don't see it happening. Aha, this is what I wanted to see. Look at all of the sixes. And then I just end. Got him. 50 star shards, and we get to choose up to two die. Owl light charge. Purification to each target, and two additional purification for each converted die. Also, oh, it's like scholar's charge, but it's for purification. It's for yeah, it's for conversion, not for enhancement. Moonlight wrath plus. An 8, a 7, a 6, but the alternatives are add a paralyzed hex die into your die pool, add a plague hex die. Oh, what are plague hex dies? It's a wound, dizzy, paralyzed, and plague on the alternative in the Moonlight Wraith here. Um. I'm gonna skip. Cos... <laughs> I was about to say cosmetic wisdom. Cosmic wisdom is actually what it says here. Change all dice from your hand 
with any type of corrupt action into purify one actions until the end of the enemy's next turn. Right, okay, so this nullifies other risky die that I may have had and gives them to me as targets that I could have enhanced. Not super keen on that, frankly. High guard. Draw cards and light shield. Neat. Bright enhancement. No, <laughs> bright enhancement. Enhance up to two die from your hand for the rest of the run. You also have... <laughs> dissolve life, lose a heart. It's unforgeable. So I can't overwrite that. I'm going with the Bright Enhancement here, though, because, uh, of course, it sounds cool as hell. 50 Star Shards or destroying a die from the die pool. Honestly, I kind of want to get rid of um, Twilight Sigil. I think Twilight Sigil's just not what we're doing at all, in almost any way, at almost any time. Do I have anything worse than that, though? Minor Purify? Kinda? Yeah, right. Time for a normal battle. Enemies are disorientated. That's okay, we're doomed. Okay, so their disorientation says purifying corrupt actions of any type on its die have their values randomized between 1 and 6. Oof. Oh, wow. They were basically as high as they could have been on the randomization. Four, five, 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 two, six. Woof. I can give the enemy some uh, Twilight Sigil. I'm definitely gonna. Let's do a wee reroll of this and my enhancement die. Actually, I also don't want the enemy to re-roll... Uh, I don't want the enemy to do AoE damage here, because it'll literally just take out both of my chumps instantly. I'm going to keep the three corruption to any target, because if I do that to myself, I'll at least have the ability to then uh, purify the enemy. Sick. I think that's probably the best alternative available on the board for us. Okay, so I deal three to myself, four to the enemy, and then I re-unlock un uh, rolls, so I can... Reroll for the enhancement again. Yes! Huzzah! Uh, let's enhance the one that I've kept, and I will convert the six into a big AoE heal. Oh no! Ah, oh, two light shields winning target. That should have obviously gone to the enemy because the light shield is going to disappear at the start of the next turn. However, it would have prevented the enemy from getting closer to their own overcorruption. Oh boy, that's a 12. Love to see those. Um... First things first, I'm going to play the big 12, because it's good. I want to play it. Three corruption to us, and then one disorient. Oh, so we'll, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'm happy to be disoriented. I've got relatively low values on my die. It's like a part of the thing that I'm doing, you see. Your turn. <sighs> All right. There's another four for you quickly. Let's enhance this bad boy. Convert this one and then finish you off.
Corruption purified, two dice, two dice choices. Eureka plus plus, interesting. I'm not going for the Allied Charge or the Twilight Sigil. Those are exactly both the thing that we didn't want to do about adding more conversion into the deck uh, without having more ways to actually convert. <laughs> okay. Well, Eureka, convert up to two die for the rest of the run. So it'll purify those actions. Uh, boy. Do I really want to do that? It's another possibility of having a lose a heart in the base deck. I'm going to take the money and run away from that. Oh, here's another conversion die. It's not enhancement, though. But also, I'm, I'm having difficulty rolling the, the basics for the enhancement. Especially since now purifying a one corruptions no longer really works because my lowest corruption value is three. Lunar alignment. Decrease all dice from your hand with any type of purify action to value one until the enemy's next turn. Deal three purification to enemies for each purify action of any type with value one in your hand. Let's do that. Let's do Lunar Alignment. There's also Quick Strike over here if I wanted to deal four Corruption to Wing Target on Forgeable, Corruption to Self, Corruption to Self, as well as Purification Draw Die. That's super cool. I like that. I'm going to go with the Lunar Alignment. Possibility of generating more uh, die that I have control over. Epic Shot. Minimum Star Shards cost is... 300. Damn it. Oh, that's so bad. Minimum cost is 300. If I go to this green chest and I ignore both of the balance die there, I'll get another 20. And then Broken Shrine. I guess I could pray for Star Shards, but the thing is I would just give away a heart here instead. Hmm. Well, let's say Penumbra Glare. Draw two die, add Plague d Hex die into your draw pile. <laughs> Lunar alignment again. Uh, I'm going to say no to those. You know what? I'm going to say no to this one as well. I don't know how I intend on getting just 10 star shards here. Sacrifice a heart, gain a star blessing. But it would have been nice. All I had to do was turn down one more die. Every six safe die you play, refresh your virtues. The counter is kept between battles. Neat. How many do I have? I got three safe dice at the moment. Uh, you can shuffle your reward choices once. Neat. Whenever you draw a hex die, gain a research. I'm going to go with the cautious card. I'm enjoying adding safe die into this. I can't go to the epic shop because I can't afford anything there. Harumph. Calm. Deal one purification to yourself for each die in your hand. End your turn without discarding any dice from your hand. <laughs> Embrace. Big numbers. And then all I have to do is convert those. I will go with the calm here. Skull charge! Hey oh Sick. There's also Amplifier++. Plus plus. Change up to three die in your hand with any type of purify action. Sorry. With any type of purify action with value 1 into area, purify 6 action until the turn, end of the next. So amplify is kind of like enhance but also make AoE. But it probably doesn't trigger the scholar charge enhancements. However, I'm going to get a scholar charge. Now I've got 5 safe die in the deck. Woo! Obviously I'm going for the hard battle. That's how it's done. Blades of Pain. Whenever you reroll die, supply one doom to you for each die rerolled. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. And it has boost. Always draw a second die. Oh no. One corruption to all enemies, as well as a dizzy uh, dice axe in the pool, and then one corruption to us and two corruption to themselves. Lunar alignment. Decrease all die from your... with any type of purity value to one... I mean, I'll definitely deal the 11 first. Hmm. No 
these two negative actions here. I could deal five damage to myself with this starter in order to unlock another draw. Hmm. Oh no, but that draw will reroll, which will give more doom. Am I scared of doom? I don't think I'm scared of doom. There we go, I heal myself there, I also gain some doom. Ooh. I also gain an enhance action. I can convert this balance die to do eight AoE healing. Hey? Eh? Oh no, the purification die room. Sorry, I was trying to play the Purification Die there first because I thought that I was dealing additional damage that way, but obviously I was not. Uh, actually nullified the effect of the die I was trying to utilize. Oops, oops, oops. Well, it happens. It happens. Let's end the turn there. So I've got Enhancement, as well as the Scholar Die for extra verses on Enhancement. Hey, this is a Dizzy Die, it deals one purification to a random target. It had a lot of other negatives, but we hit the right one, woohoo! There's a purge value that allows you to destroy the dice though. I really want to re-roll if I can avoid it. Oh, I had the time for my set and I could have just thrown. Risky die, enhance up to two die in your hand for the rest of the run. Okay, I am actually going to reroll here in order to reroll the five because most of the other results there are ones which I would be able to enhance, and that would be enhancing them for the rest of the run as well. I'm also going to change my Twilight Sigil. Do I want to change my Twilight Sigil? No. Beautiful. Alright. Let's simply... Enhance both of these for the rest of the run. Six in AoE. Purification for each. Ooh! One purification and two additional for each die enhanced in this battle. We do nine damage with that. Another six there. Love it. Come on, roll lethal. That'll do it. <gasps> Woohoo! Alright, let's collect all of these. A hundred star shards, the two dice, and a star blessing. 
Twilight Sigil. I didn't really want those though. More conversion? I also don't really want that. Uh, apply four Scarlet Sigil 20 targets. Scarlet Sigil. Creatures with Scarlet Sigil receive X purification whenever I play a risky die. I think I'm going to elect to skip that one. Hey, and go for another New Moon Ray. 10 purification on a safe die? Sounds good to me. To Star Blessing, while you have one heart, you deal two additional purif- Oh, only one heart. Right, I would have to lose another. Uh, every three times you deal purification, apply one light shield to a random target. And at the end of your turn, all enemies receive two purification for each die in your hand. I'm going to take Dice Smith Hammer, and that's because I'm, I'm building towards techy, tricky kinds of things in the deck. And if those fail, I would still like something to happen. I would still like to accomplish something, even if I'm not accomplishing anything. You've discovered an ancient Aquarian forge that was used in the past by dice smiths. Oddly, the forge is still on. There are some working tools that you can use. I can forge either Serenity 1, Serenity says apply Serenity to target, increases purification received by X. Uh, incorruptible, apply Incorruptible 20 target, blocks all corruption until the start of your next turn, and then refresh. Ooh, refresh. Refresh is huge. I could, that, uh, I could put that on a Purify. I definitely want to put it on something that I am going to keep. These are unforgeable, unfortunately, so I can't just replace the big negative there of the Bright Enhancement. Yeah, I think I will put this on one of my uh, Risky Purify die. Nothing risky about that die anymore. Uh, oh! Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Hang on, this is a Sentinel Shop as well. Oh, Sentinel Shop. I can probably upgrade each of my Sentinels at that shop. Or I could go to improve my dice pool. Duplicating, especially if I forged this Purify again, added one more side to it, and then duplicated it. That'd be pretty sick. I'm getting a lot worse at uh, converting things right now, though. I have very, very few ones. Thankfully, I've got all of these enemy purify ones on my safe die. Calm is certainly helping out here. <sighs> Fine, I'm going to go for the Sentinels. So to get new Sentinels, there's a Autonomous Beacon here with two Purification to a random target and also Healbot. Okay, so it's just automatically happening. Precision, choose a die face. Wow, Autonomous Beacon, sick. I can only have two Sentinels at a time, though. Uh, Vorpal Plate. Whenever Corruption is received from others, Corruption Source also receives two Purification. Neat. Um, I'm going to be going with the upgrades, and I'm going to upgrade each of mine. So the Guardian is going to have a larger auto turret. And the Owl is going to have a second die that has Enhanced 2. Ooh, looks like each of them also gained a health. That could be relevant. Choose up to two balance die or choose up to two die. I'm going to go for two die. I would rather have the option of taking safe ones. Force Purify! What? Change your hand in your hand into purify one action for the rest of the run. Oh, baby. There's also ingenious touch. Change up to four dice from your hand into purify one actions until the enemy of the next, uh, uh, until the end of your ne enemy's next turn. Then there's enhance plus plus, enhance four die at a time. Oh. I'm gonna go forge purify. It'll give me the ability to replace negative faces with uh, low value purify faces, which I can then pure, uh, enhance. Allied charge, allied charge plus plus, and amplify. 
Choose three dice in your hand. Purify action of value one. Turn them into area. Nope. I'm going to go for the money on that one. Shrine. Oh. Do I dare? I'm going to sacrifice a heart and gain a star blessing. I only have one heart left. Let's go. Every four times you deal purification to one enemy, uh, all enemies, you receive a purification. For every eight starter dice you play, how many starter dice do I have left? Six? Uh, deal six purification to all enemies, and it's kept between battles. And then there's also, if three dice are converted in a single turn, refresh your virtues. That's going to be a very unlikely one. Um, I'm going to take the healing one because I'm a little uh, threatened by the position I put myself in here of only having one available heart and I'm about to fight a boss. The Doomed Astronomer. Oh, that's a lot of health. Eldritch Influence and Decay? Okay, Eldritch Influence. Whenever you play a Virtue, apply one Doom to a various target. Oof. It's also Decay at the start of its turn. It increases its overcorruption by one, and it will eventually overcorrupt to add Doom to itself. Regardless. Alright. Well, this Sentinel die will allow me to enhance a couple of them. Seems great to me. This is also light shield to all enemies. Uh, we've also got a enemy sentinel here, the armillary negator. It says re uh, random sentinel reshape. Change into a random, sorry, change a random sentinel die into area corrupt one action for the rest of the battle. And this one is going to apply two doom to a random sentinel. Oof. Doomed Astronomer die. So none of you are especially threatening, but you are going to grow. Put your die from your hand into Purify 1 for the rest of the run. I don't really need to do that right now, just because I rolled pretty well. Oh, also, these guys have infinite corruption? So I guess I'm only targeting the Doom's Astronomer then. Makes sense. Do I want to re-roll any of the enemy die? Well, I mean, currently the Doom's Astronomer is using the worst available die. There we go. My Dice Smith Hammer still makes some value out of the end there. Right. Hey, nice. Oh, okay, so now I've got an area doom on, sorry, an area corruption on my guardian and also doom increasing the, the effect of that. Oh, wow. Deals five additional damage for each dice that's been enhanced. I need to try and re-roll into an enhancement. Because that'd be great. And it's a double enhance as well. Oh, it was, it was of course going to be double enhance. Those are the only available. So now our epic die for the scholarly charge is going to deal 21 purification to its target. Mwah. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. I just played my eighth safe die, refreshing my virtues. However, if I play a virtue... I apply one doom to a random target, which could be bad. Oh god. Why is it always that guy? Three light shields, 20 targets. I'm going to get myself some health there. Uh, 
Well, about as little as possibly could have happened happened there. Uh, so this risky die enhances a die in my hand until the rest uh, for the rest of the run. So I kind of want to re-roll my safe die. I'm going to do that. Yeah, because a one's so sick. Because it gets enhanced forever! I can deal some corruption to myself and then do the area purification, negating my self-corruption. Two Doom Dual Sentinels. That happens at the end of the turn, thankfully. sure I just win this turn. How certain can I be? <laughs> Pretty certain. I <laughs> uh, love it. 11? Another 11? Got him! As it turns out, I definitely could afford to give away that heart. <laughs> Uh, 150 Star Shards, a new Sentinel, another Epic Die, a Black Hole Blessing, and all of my hearts back. It's worth noting, these Sentinels are... So my ones are currently level 3. These are coming in at level 4. The Adapted Courier, Express Delivery. It's got a Heal Bot effect on it. Colossus Hand is Disoriented infinitely, but it also has safeguard at the start of your turn. Apply three light shield to this creature, then decrease safeguard. And then finally, solar plexus. At the start of its turn, all targets receive two purification. Ooh, big AOEs. Big AOEs that can also be increased in size. I kinda guess I'm replacing the Guardian here? I'm not over the moon about it, but I think it will be better. Oh, Scholar Charge Plus Plus is here again. <laughs> Change a die from your hand into Crop 14 for the rest of the run and then convert it. Uh, refresh, refresh your virtues. It's neat, but... We just proved how many conversions I can make and how I can get ridiculous damage out of that. Increased Purification received by all targets by two, but Corruption received by us by one. <laughs> Additional die per turn at the start of battle, add three Wound Hex die into the draw pool, and then finally, replace your reroll Virtual. Oh, with an Enhance one Virtue! Well, oh, do I actually want that though? I'm pretty good at enhancing, I don't want to reroll as well. Doing it. <clears throat> The inerasable blackboard. All right. Mm, Sentinel shop. I don't think so. Broken shrine, though. Maybe. There you go. I have one of my hearts. In return, we see the Star Blessings uh, Die Smith we've seen before. Uh, Moon Eye, whenever you or a Sentinel deal corruption to an enemy, apply one light shield to you and your Sentinels. No. Uh, the start of the battle, refresh your virtues. Me. 
I'll take a free draw on turn one, as well as four damage on turn one, as well as the other thing. Hard battle time. Oh god. You've got four decline. Wait. Four. Oh, you've got infinite health. Got it. So decline. Four decline will be defeated in four turns. So I just have to hold out. <laughs> That's okay. They're only going to do 24 corruption to me. As well as one paralyzed, drawing a. Uh, one if you were dying, then I otherwise might. Aphotic Instinct. At the end of its turn, resets Doom to 26 Doom. Whenever it receives Purification, decrease the Doom amount for the Purification receipt. Makes sense. Okay, so I need to start dealing damage to you in order to lessen the amount of damage you intend to deal to me. Oh no. I don't have access to a reroll in my hand, and I did hit the uh, lose a heart die. <laughs> oh, oh god, that's... That's about as bad as it could be. Oh, that's why I couldn't change my reroll. Huh? Huh? Deal one purification to yourself for each die in hand. And then end your turn without discarding any of them. There we go. Maybe I'll get the ability to reroll it next turn. Also, my Dice Smith Hammer actually comboed with that. Come on. I'm going to need a reroll for that one. Yeah, none of those look like rerolls. Hey, <sighs> boy. <laughs> the enemy uh, will purify all targets if I overcorrupt them. This would try and forge a Purify, so I, I wouldn't be able to forge that Dissolve face off. I would still just need to reroll it somehow. I think I'm just going to end up losing that heart. I'm not okay with it. I'm pretty... Oh! Oh! We drew the die that does it! Don't you dare roll that again. No! <laughs> I worked so hard. <sighs> it's fine. Let me in the turn. Let me in the turn. Let me in the turn. Ugh. Didn't love that. That was not great. I'm stunned. I can't re-roll dice until the end of my next turn. Okay. Being able to enhance any die over the course of this. You've never rolled the enhance. Never. Not once. Never. No. Of course not. Um. <laughs> Enemy is over corrupted. They purify all of us, including themselves. I can play another safe die there. Oh, 
All right, one more turn. If I got the the loser heart again, I would have lost my GD mine. <laughs> oh boy. Doing a lot of purification myself here. That said, with that five, I think we're all good. Decline is worn off, and we won the battle. Did cost us a heart, though. There's Forge Purify, Moonlight, Wrath, and Defensive Lights. Um, I kind of want to skip here. So I will. Draw balanced. Draw two balanced die. Oh, I see. Um, I'm going to take Cosmic Wisdom for the possibility of pulling us out of the dirt when I, I'm going to need more things that can rectify the uh, loser heart. <laughs> While you have one heart, you deal two additional purification. If all three dice are converted in the same turn, of course, he was in it before. Every eight times you deal purification to an enemy, gain one burst. I'm going to take the Azimuth's Ring because, I mean, it's active at the moment and I am as threatened as possible at the moment. Let's go for the money and then these balance die. They're going to be fighting uphill to be included. Research, though. Also ascend. Enhance all dice from your hand until the enemy's next turn. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I do need a research die eventually. Something to help me to purify for larger values. And Meditate just seems like a good numbers. Also has Draw. Love some Draw. Let's go to a Forge Shop. <clears throat> I'm almost leaning towards destroying the One Heart. Because the thing is, it, it's, it now proposes a possibility in my deck that it just does kill me. I've done a reasonable amount of Bright Enhancement. You know what? I'm actually going to destroy the Bright Enhancement. I really didn't want to. But I can't put myself in a position where there's one, one dice that if I just roll the six side, I lose. Uh, I could start destroying some more die, though. Minor enhance. Only enhancing one die costs two die in order to get that action off. It seems so minimal. Minor shields are one of the best ones to actually try and enhance at this point. Acceptance? Maybe I should get rid of the AoE. Hard battle, I'm no wimp. Overcorruption applies three reinforce to all targets when it's overcorrupted. Uh, reinforcement says it blocks all purification, then decreases reinforce by one. If X or more purification at once, it loses all reinforced. Got it. Oh, doubling hearts this early on. Love to see it. Let's draw. 
Ooh, Scarlet Sigil. When Purification is received from others, Purification Source receives two Corruption as well. That's pretty tough. Oh! Hypersensitive Aura. All targets receive double purification and double corruption. Okay, well, that, that makes a lot of sense as to what happened to Mooney there. Okay, there goes your summon. Get chumped, chump. Deals three corruption to a random target. I should have put the Scarlet Sigil on them first. Oops. Sorry, the Scarlet Twilight Sigil, rather. I was like, it doesn't pose a threat to any of my units. That's what I sound like. Um, oh boy. Grant research. I'm not going to unlock my conversion action for a little bit of time though. the convert setup here. So 3 Pure 5 itself was originally just to replace that side of the die. However, I can make it one Purify and then target to the enemy. Which does six damage. Gets the additional damage from the Azimuth's Ring and then doubles it. So if this hits me, I kind of want it to. Oh, no, it did. I mean, it hit them. That's the, the second best target, as long as it doesn't hit my Sentinel. Wants to apply six reinforce to me, locking all of my reinforce, so I'll have less healing. Oof. I'm gonna go that as purification of myself. Oh, this is always purification of the self. I would not have taken meditate if I uh, had taken an extra second and seen that. All right, I'm gonna end with these in hand, activating the dice smith hammer, dealing eight damage to the enemy. I'll take six. Not enough to make me lose my final heart. Literally one less than I would need to lose my final heart. Oh, so many ones. That said, doesn't matter at all. Got him. Corruption purified, I get to choose up to two die and another star blessing. 
Ooh, Astral Rebound. This is a lot of ones. I like these. Next time you play is return to your draw pool instead of being discarded. I do like those as well. Two purification for each risky die you have in your pool. I have two. That would be my third. Nope, I'm going for Astral Rebound. And then skipping the second. For every eight balanced I play, I have four balanced. Draw a safe or risky die. I mean, the other two don't even activate for us. Uh, the the one that requires that I have a huge amount of uh, dice total, or that I'm dealing corruption. So I could get 50, 50, and then I would have 250 for an upgrade? Yep. Oh, seven! The Guardian has a seven auto turret. That's huge. For a second die next turn. Um, however... I can upgrade the Ancient Effigy to have an additional enhancement. And I will. And fine, you did it! You got me! I'm actually gonna recover a heart! Boss Battle Decayed Star. The final challenge of Ground Zero yields 150 Star Shards, a Sentinel, an Epic Die, a Black Hole Blessing, and recovers all your hearts. Okay. So it has boost for infinite turns. Its over-corruption effect is deal six corruption to us and then devour corruption by one. Then, sorry, then increases the corruption of that ability by one. Cool. Uh, and then finally, Hollow Skin negates one buff. They add Decayed Hex Die to my pool and add Ruin to themselves. Creatures with Ruin receive X Corruption at the start of their turn, then they decrease Ruin by one. Uh, okay, right, so you're going to poison yourself. I kind of really want to reroll both of your die, but I don't have any rerolls anymore. At the start of their turn... Okay, so Light Shield blocks Corruption until the start of your next turn. And this occurs at the start of the turn. I don't know if this would protect. Um, I'm going to roll an Enhancement. Purification for uh, die in the die fall. Um, I'm going to deal five corruption to myself, I think, and then heal that back. It will give me the ability to draw a new card. Some Twilight Sigil to the enemy, which wears off their hollow skin effect. I mean, they're only targeting themselves at the moment. I will still heal, though. Out of an abundance of caution. And you know what? We'll see if the Light Shield would actually manage to negate any of the ruin that they are visiting upon themselves.
Alrighty then, buddy. Oh, that's just, it's a lot of ruin for them to get on this turn. It's gonna make my life <sighs> a hard one, a hard life. Okay, so Ruin won't even activate until next, so now. Uh, it's also got the ability to do three Corruption to me. So if I take three from my Risky Die, and then heal up two... I can convert this, getting an additional conversion, which is going to be important for our epic scholarly dies. Atomic Brooch has healed us. One more safe die, refreshes all of our virtues. Nice, actually get another useful conversion. Work Dice Smith Hammer. Ow, my body. Enemies on half HP. They've also got a decay to themselves at the start of a turn, increase its over corruption by. Uh, X. Okay, so Ruin is healing them as well, because it's also providing corruption, whereas this is just the over-corruption bar. To Ruin to all targets, they receive X corruption at the start of the turn. Okay, so I should make sure that I am not on low HP, but I'm not going to be. Grant. Two purification to an enemy for each safety I have in my pool. Yep, that's a lot of them. Well, would have been nice to use some other stuff there, but I don't got to get too fancy with it. <clears throat> all right. Here's all of my cursed die. Six purification of myself, neat. Two ruin to an enemy, two ruin to any target. I mean, I don't really want to ruin myself. Seems like a relatively easy way to put myself in a awful position. So, ruin to an enemy, I have to do it there. And I'll give my soul a plexus. My own ruin? Grand. Attack the enemy once more. Thrice more, thrice more. And he has 62 HP remaining. Unfortunately, they will heal by 9 at the start of their turn. I'm not perfectly understanding, why am I not taking so much damage to the Ruin? I'm, I I had two Ruin before, and it dealt zero damage to me. Oh, god no. Um... I don't have any converting I can do, and all of the negatives have come home to roost. Apply 
Add two ruin to an enemy. It has to be you. One DK to an enemy. It has to be you. can't put more ruin on the enemy because I won't eventually be able to kill them if I keep doing that. It's also going to overcorrupt and deal six to me, which is going to put me in a state of, uh, it, 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 it's going to be very difficult for me to start responding to the enemy. Um, It also intends to do three corruption to me. Am I already dead then? Oh no, I've got a heart. Cool. Yeah, because it's going to do three to me. And then another six. I can't really stop myself from losing a heart this round, so I'm just going to keep damaging the enemy. Also, if I am about to die, but I'm going to get brought back. Oh, no, 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 you lose a heart. Right, okay, so I'm not going to die and brought back, so I'm not going to lose all of the buffs and debuffs that I put on myself. <sighs> I hate that I had to do that. I shouldn't have given up my reroll. Enemies overcorrupted. Hmm, my body. Ow. I'm overcorrupted now. And now I'm over being corrupted. So I lose a heart, and now I'm good. That was admittedly a pretty rough draw. Sense purification of the self and draw a die. Light shield the enemies so that I can try and stop them from overcorrupting this turn, but I don't expect I will. Hmm. Ruin. Yeah, that hurts. They dealt damage to me and overcorrupted, so. Boom. There goes my HP bar. I have become corrupted. Dang, I was really hoping I was just gonna straight out of the park win my first run. Alas, I will settle for meeting the final boss. I believe this was the final boss. Well, well, no, it said the final challenge of ground zero. So there might have been another floor after this still. So I definitely should have left myself with rerolls still in the pool. If I had, everything would be fine. Also, I've got to start thinking about the fact that enemies will put hex die into my deck. So having a little bit of ability to you know, burn through other die seems reasonably powerful. Um, okay, so Star Telescope, gain a star blessing, a passive effect with lower power, unlocked. So we've unlocked Star Telescope, Black Hole Telescope, and Chest at the start of the run unlocked. Okay, so there's a run start bonus, got it. Oh, hey, second level up. 
new dice will appear using these new actions. So this is a new action called Moonlight. Uh, whenever you play a hex die, all targets receive X purification. Cool. And new blessings will appear in future runs. So we've got the star blessing Moonshard, Moony. Uh, whenever you or a Sentinel deal corruption to an enemy with at least three corruption, gain a Moonlight. Haunted Chalk. Whenever an enemy die is enhanced, that enemy receives 120 purification. Wow. And the Gloomy Monocle, also for Mooney. Replace your Convert Virtue with Penumbra Glare 2 Virtue. So Penumbra Glare says, draw two dice, add three Plague Hex die into your discard. Replace your convert virtue. Oh, so your default. Your default. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, drawing additional die is exceptionally powerful. Drawing two additional die every single turn is exceptionally powerful. It's just you're going to have to find a way to utilize the uh, plague hex die that you keep putting in your pool with that. That's interesting. Big trade off, big risk and reward. And yeah, I didn't expect I would make myself all the way to three. But I have unlocked Kalarius the Tidehammer. Let's head back to the main menu. So that I can say that my name's been Rhapsody. There's a link at the very top of the description uh, down below, by the way, to the Steam store page where you can pick this game up for yourself. The moment, though. My name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Australia Six Sided Oracles. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the top left, which as of the release of this video is not populated with anything else, but in the future we'll have present and all future videos on Australia. Stream past the names of people who are generally supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash rapsyplays. Add above the thank you and a special thanks to Abatoff. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.